everyone welcome to my channel you requested easy watercolor and quick watercolor from me also you requested a real-time tutorial so I'm giving you one here we go I will show you step by step how I painted this beautiful bird and succulent in a second please don't forget to hit the like button if you like my videos and also please don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear from me and my channel in the future all the colors and materials I used in this video is listed in the description part I don't want to keep you waiting so let's start my step-by-step -step tutorial first we will do the wet on wet method this is why I am applying a layer of water here. How much water is too much if you ask? There shouldn't be any pool of the water, but the surface needs to be shiny. Because if you put too much water, then the paint will pull at places and it's not gonna look good. But don't worry, if that happens, you can always remove the paint with the corner of your napkin or paper towel. I use my violet color here. You can choose whatever you can mix red and blue and depending on how much red or blue you want in it, you can determine your own color. That's the beauty of watercolor. Because my paper is already wet, whenever I touch, you can see that the paint is spreading beautifully into the other paint. And here I am using orange. I use the bright orange color, but you can also use colors like raw sienna, or you can add a little bit more yellow tone to it. Again, you have the power. Here I'm using uh, my light blue color. I listed all the colors that I used in the description part but of course you can use your own color whatever you choose if you look at this painting you see that this orange color looks very nice with blue together and if you ask the reason the reason is the color wheel they're complementary colors if you haven't watched my previous video where I explained the color wheel in detail and how to choose your colors in watercolor I'm putting it in the top right corner Here I'm wetting the head again, this time I'm going to add again my light blue. And I don't know if you saw it, but I actually dried the first part that I did with the help of a blow dryer. You can actually leave it to itself and you can let it dry. But if you are impatient or if you feel like you want to apply a second layer soon, then you can always dry it with your blow dryer. But don't forget, once your paint is dry, you cannot make any corrections. It's very difficult to make corrections. So I wanted to do the second layer. That's why I dried my first layer already. And because this is a real-time tutorial, of course, I will make changes as I go. I will feel like, oh, this color didn't fit here very well, so I might change it. So don't get mad at me if I change um, in the future, which I will for sure. But watercolor is all about trial and error. I'm using my number five brush here, but you can use whatever brush you feel like. For the smaller areas, of course, we need um, number two, number three brushes for the middle areas. If you want to get more details, of course, you need a more fine, a finer point. So you can change your brush sizes accordingly we usually use the big sizes big brush sizes for the bigger areas which I don't have in this tutorial so I'm adding this orange color I added red and raw sienna together to get this orange tone but I am NOT super happy about it probably I'm going to change it in a bit Here, the wing part, I wanted to make it red. Red really changes the whole picture. 
Red color is amazing. It always gives this lively feeling to this painting. I'm trying to be careful here because I don't want to do everything completely red and I probably will do two or three more layers here. But I also want to get a really bright color. So I'm trying to have a damp brush instead of having a very, very wet brush. So if you feel like your brush is really, really wet, it's soaking wet, it's not good because that's not going to look good on your paper. I highly recommend to have a piece of paper towel or napkin and when you dip your brush into the water and then the paint, make sure that you actually touch that napkin with your brush. It's very relaxing to do this one actually. Also, if you haven't watched my video about watercolor basics before i give 25 tips for the watercolor beginners i'm putting it in the upper right corner for you it actually explains all the techniques that i'm using here in detail please make sure that you have two glasses of water each time because you dip your brush into the first one first and then you rinse it in the second one it really really works well that way I am adding the second layer of the blue, light blue, sky blue. And I wanted to kind of get into that orange color much better. So I'm kind of reactivating the orange color. And of course I'm adding a little bit more blue on the top, on the head. You see that how this red looks? I don't really like how it looks. It just kind of spread really badly. Uh, as I said before, it's all trial and error. So you can see as long as your paint is wet, you can go back and pick up that paint with help of your, with the help of your napkin. And of course, with your clean brush and your clean water, you can mix all these leftover layers together. And I'm gonna add a little bit more blue or violet colors back here. But this looks too dark for me because of the red layer already underneath. Uh, so probably I'm going to make some patches with my napkin to make it look lighter. Those areas that I am actually kind of pressure marking right now, don't worry, all the wet paint around it will actually flow into those areas and fill them in. or the filled in you can see and of course I still want some red <laughs> so I'm going to try again with my orangey red color that I prepared by just mixing my bright red Windsor red with my yellow color I want to add some red here as well and see what happens I want a slightly orangey tone here and a little bit dots of blue. I mean, I don't even know a bird exists like this, but of course we create our own, right? That's the power of creativity. I think in water watercolor, one of the most important material that you have is the paper towel because if you have it right next to you anytime whenever you make a mistake you can act on it really fast and you know there's always a turning back in watercolor almost always let's say 98 percent 
So I did the second layer of the wing. Again, I used red, but this time I added more paint instead of more water. And now I have some yellowish orange tone. And with this orange tone, I want to just get some layers on it again. Why am I doing this when the red paint is still wet is because I want them to kind of combine and, you know, create this beautiful combination together. And for the rest of this white area, I want to actually fill them in with my yellowish orange tone. Here again, I just want to make sure that this color kind of matches with the wing. So I wanted to add this orange colors as well. Some colors bleed in each other very nicely. Some colors won't. So again, you have to do trial and error for this. I'm going to start while that's drying. I'm going to start my flowers and the branch here I'm using olive green and with olive green I'm going to do some of the leaves that was too much water for me so I kind of picked it up with my napkin and while I am using my small brush I'm just making sure that I am having these leaf shapes nicely and following my sketch. In watercolor sketch, I use my graphite pencil, usually HB, and I'm trying not to put any pressure on the paper because you don't want your pencils to show underneath. But I didn't erase them either, so because I think this was a very good sketch for me, I didn't have to erase it, it wasn't too dark. Painting these leaves are really relaxing. Now I'm going to use this ochre color, ochre, it's like brownish orange tone. And that was too dark for me, so I'm going to make it a little bit more orange. Because I want warm colors in this painting, I am making it more orange now, as you can see. I'm going to add everywhere randomly. I'm not following any kind of sketch here. Literally, there's nothing there. I'm adding just with simple brush strokes. Some flowers and some orange leaves. And if you watch what I'm doing, it's usually I am putting more pressure at the bottom of the object. And then while I'm going up, let's say it's the leaves, um, I am actually putting less and less pressure on my brush and I'm just gently removing my brush from the paper so that it leaves this really nice from thicker to thinner effect. Here again, just with basic brush strokes, I added some flowers there. I'm using the same light color, light blue color that I used for the bird. And I had forgotten bird's tail, so I added that and now in my blue i added just a little bit of red so i have some violetish blue color right now i am putting it like almost actually purple yeah my purple color right now and i'm just adding again randomly everywhere so you see the cauliflower effect right now in the body of this little bird in order to remove that cauliflower effect you can do this I have my watercolor pen, but you can actually use any kind of brush. 
I am going over with clean water around those borders and trying to blend those colors in. So this is what I was talking about, watercolor is very forgiving, you can make changes as you go and you can try to fix things and it is very forgiving in that sense. I have a really nice mix of colors there, I know it looks like many many colors exist at the same time but I actually really love it again depending on your taste you can choose any color you want and actually you can look at the color wheel and see all these complementary colors and choose them accordingly that will make even your painting pop more I'm adding these black details on the wing right now. I think it will define the wing much better. But when dealing with black, just make sure that you are actually thinking twice before you put it down because, okay, watercolor is forgiving, but when it comes to black color, it's really difficult to blend in with other colors. So make sure that that's the actually point that you want to draw. I dried every layer that I did right now. I'm still holding the black color and I'm doing the area around the eye right now and of course I'll do the beak. We will do many layers here. One black layer is never enough. Here a very small brush, maybe number three or number two is necessary because it is tiny and you're dealing with tiny details, especially I'm going to do the eyeball in a second. For those, you know, you need to have a very fine point with your brush. Unless you're a very professional watercolor artist, which actually they can use very big brushes and they are fine points. I am not there yet, so. With the black I have on my brush, I also wanted to do the branch because I want to mix blue and black there. And this is my dark blue color. I really like this blue. And why I didn't add the eyeball yet is because I want that black area to dry first and then I will go in and add the eye detail because otherwise it might kind of leak in each other and I don't want that. So here with the branch, I have all these details with black, but the background I wanted to do dark blue. Yeah, all the branch details I did with black, but it wasn't pure black. You know, I added some water into it, so I kind of um, toned it down. For the branches, little branches, I mixed brown, olive green, and black. So I had this really earthy color in the end. I really loved it. with very tiny brush strokes, almost, I'm barely touching the paper, I can get this thin branch details. In order to get this thin branch details, you need to barely touch the paper and just follow the direction of the branch. And when you come to the end of this branch, you just lift your brush gently, so it gives this really nice effect. Our painting is finally coming to its beautiful shape. I can see it's going to be beautiful. Of course, we're going to add more flowers and more colors to it. 
I was unhappy with the chest of the bird, so I am adding white and I'm mixing white and light blue. I'm adding this very light blue tone right here and it looks much better this way for me. I didn't want the chest of the bird be really, really dark. This is wet on dry method. What it means is like I have a dry surface and I'm going with my wet brush and I'm trying to get the color combination I want by just mixing the colors that I'm putting on the dry surface. Right now I'm doing the eyeball very carefully. You can see that I'm just barely touching the paper with my black color and trying to add those eye details. And the second layer of the beak. Very nice. You can see that with the napkin, I tried to fix it, but with black color, it's difficult. So what you can do in that case, it, if it's really important to you and you couldn't erase your mistake that you did it with black, you can always try with a white gouache color and going around or on and going over that black area. I'm putting my white gouache, but not to fix the black color. I just wanted to add some white there. So this is actually a gouache paint. Why gouache, you ask? Because usually we use white watercolor to tone down uh, other colors. We make it lighter, right? But if you want a really opaque result that like, just like I did on top of another color, then we definitely need gouache because it is very opaque. Now I'm adding all these flowers with my bright pink color. It really brightened up the whole painting. I'm putting it a little bit here, very randomly. I'm just having random brush strokes. I'm just thinking where this pink color would look the best. Pink is complementary colors with green, so next to green it's going to pop. I know that. So I'm trying to put where the green leaves are mostly. But you can actually put anywhere you want. Here I'm adding a little bit more yellow tone. Here too. And I think I will add bright yellow as well because I want this look to springy rather than fall looking. So I think a bright red and bright yellow would look good. So I'm going to add those in a second. I'm adding this leaf here too. If this was only green leaves, definitely I would use different tones of leaves. So for example, here I used olive green, but I would add more sap green into it or more bright green into it and mix it and use it in some places and then I would mix it again with, I don't know, maybe yellow or a more bluish tone and I would add that. So at least I would use three, four different tones of the same color. As I promised, I am using red color in 
some areas not everywhere don't use the same color everywhere then it's not going to look natural but i'm adding on the left corner first i'm going to add just a little bit of here as well here a little bit see on the top i had a lot of paint in my brush but as i go lower you see that my paint kind of fades it, which is still beautiful i'm gonna keep that but this shows how different tones you can get with the same brush strokes in your painting now the bright yellow time i really like this yellow the warm yellow i'm going to add on these areas Yellow really looks nice with pink color, violet color, so I put all these areas. I am doing the final layer of the light blue for our bird because I really want it to look smoother. I continue adding some more details in the flowers with the leftover paint on my brush from the blue, I'm adding it wherever I want to. I also add some here. And why not here? But do you see, I'm using my brush so freely. I am literally just touching wherever I want to. And if I don't like it, as you can see, I'm removing it. And I'm adding back more. If your painting is wet, please make sure that you don't touch it because if you touch with your hand, then you might ruin your painting. This is one of the reasons why we wait till the painting dries to add more details. Now I have my yellow still and I'm trying to add more colors to my leaves. I want more red here. And maybe there. Here. Watercolor is more dreamy for me so I really like to play with it and create my own word in my painting so feel free to do whatever you want to so with dark blue and black mixture I added the feet of the bird and also I added some details on the tail now it is time to go to the beak and add the final layer for the beak of course I added much more black into my brush because I don't want it blue but also I want it to have some blue hue I'm finishing up the branch Also, it is important to create your mixtures from the beginning a lot, especially if you're going to use in large areas that painting, because it is hard to get the same type of mixture again if you run out of your first batch of paint. So if you're doing the branch, for example, or the bird with one color, then make sure that you have enough paint mixture on your palette before you start. I added some more red and some dark blue now.
and finally some yellow yellowish green that was too much too watery so I'm just picking it up see you can prevent this by just drying your brush on a piece of napkin instead it's finished now and we have our bird and beautiful flowers now the succulent came but this is going to be a little bit fast forward if you want the full-time tutorial of the succulent too it is on my patreon patreon.com slash but i will explain to you anyway what i did there i added a brown color for the pot and i mixed my bright green color with white gouache and i added all these leaf details like that afterwards i had to make sure that they dried and i added a second layer of brown because the first layer was too bright once i made sure my painting is completely dry i went in with my colored pencils and i added all these details with dark brown and the other tones of brown like orange brown and reddish brown in order to do the leaves for the succulent i added some purple at the very tip and i added dark green at the bottom where the shadows are and then i actually burnished them with my white colored pencil and for the blow part i burnished them with my orange color pencil i really hope you found this tutorial helpful if you like my videos and if you think you learn a lot, please don't forget to subscribe so you can hear more about my channel. Every Tuesday and Thursday I post a new tutorial for you. See you in my next video. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe and visit my website ejagurlar.com. Stay with art.